Kleinfuss. Uh, I'm an SVP with SimSip. Over the next few minutes, uh, we're going to have a conversation. I'm going to pose some questions to Amika to support that. And let's begin with Amika introducing herself and, uh, and just talking a little bit about how the paper came to be. My name is Amaka Ezrike, and I'm a scientist uh, with the translational science team of SimSip, Satara UK. And really the reason we published this paper is because we've had a lot of people who um, use the simulator but come from a background where they're not familiar what to do. And given that we know that the simulator is very useful, we decided that it would be um, good to have a, um, a tutorial that will guide people on how they can develop compound files um, using the simulator because we know that it's got wide applicability. Great. Thank you so much. So let's begin with... Um, taking a sort of step backward and just providing a brief description of the SimSip simulator and what do we mean by these compound files? Okay, so um, with the SimSip simulator, it's divided into three sections. So the first section is um, what's to do with the population, so what we call the systems data. And then the second section is the compound file. So that's the drug data, depending on what drug you're trying to simulate. And the third section is the trial design. So within the simulator, we keep these three sections separate such that you can look at the impact of one upon the other, depending on what combinations you do. So this paper focuses on the steps you use to develop a compound file um, and particularly looking at small molecules. So not looking at biologics. Great, thank you. So when you're building um, a PBPK model, what are the first steps that you need to, to consider? Well, that's a really good question. I think many times when we're developing a compound file, we tend to think, oh gosh, I need to get all the data possible. Um, but usually what we advise is, first of all, you need to think about what is the purpose of your model? Um, because the purpose of your model really influences what kind of data you need to collect and what kind of data you need to put into your model. So I can give an instance. So if you're developing a drug um, that you know you're going to be giving in the context of um, to a population where they're going to be taking that drug alongside other drugs. So most times you're looking to predict DDI liability. So you're trying to look about look at what is going to be um, the effects when you can administer the compound that you're developing alongside other drugs that might either uh, pose a DDI risk. Great. So we, we call this fit for purpose, right? Although yes. obviously, yes. as once the model is developed, it can be expanded to answer many other what if questions, which is one of the beauties of PBPK modeling. So um, from the perspective of the uh, scientist uh, that is using the tutorial, um, how does this tutorial really help modelers to take the right steps? Okay, I think what we tried to do with the paper was to go, um, so if you had the SimSip simulator and then you had you were trying to develop your model, so looking at the SimSip simulator, what are the input parameters that you need? Because the SimSip simulator is, is, is very user-friendly so that they split into different tabs and the different sections apply to different um, related parameters. So for instance, if you're looking at in terms of absorption, you needed to think about what input parameters would I need to describe the absorption of my compound. If you wanted to describe the elimination, what input parameters would I require? So what we did was to take those different um, parameters in a step-by-step -step process and describe, okay, for this particular parameter, these are the input, inputs that you need, and these are the considerations that you need to think about when selecting the input for your specific compound. Great. So before I ask you um, to go a little bit further into the tutorial, first, just you used a specific compound. Can you describe that compound and why you chose that compound? Okay, so we used uh, Ondansetron as a model. And the reason why we chose Ondansetron was primarily because um, Ondansetron is commonly given to um, cancer patients um, for anti-nausea. So what it means is that even though it's not given as, as an anti-cancer drug, but it's going to be taken alongside other drugs that are being used for cancer chemotherapy. So depending on um, how those other drugs are being eliminated, there's, there's potentially a risk of um, DDI when those two drugs are taken along, um, at the same time. So we wanted to explore what is the DDI liability for on Dancitron, either as a victim so wherein another drug is affecting its drug metabolism or as a perpetrator, wherein ondansetron itself is affecting the metabolism of the co-administered drug. 
Excellent logical choice. Okay, um, so in the paper, you um, you divide the tutorial into three sections, model development, model verification, model application. Let's just briefly walk through each one. So starting with model development. Okay, um, so first of all, I just wanted to highlight that this uh, approach we normally use is what we use for every compound file development and it's thought as best practice. And what usually happens is that you get your data together, you develop your uh, model, and then you then uh, verify the model using an independent set of clinical studies and then look at different applications of your model. So for model development, that is where we spent a significant part about on the paper. So looking at the input parameters um, and also thinking about what are the considerations wherein you would use one input parameter over another. Um, so we talked about that in, 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 a, in a bit of a detail. Um, so if, if I give an example, so let me focus on elimination, for instance. So, you know, I, I mentioned that on Dancitron is being used, we're, we're developing this model to look at DDI liability. So there are a number of elimination um, options within the simulator. So you can put in an elimination of option as a whole body clearance. So like an in vitro clearance or an oral clearance. But if you're looking at DDI liability, that's not the option to use because you want to be able to define on Dancitron's clearance through the different enzymes responsible for the clearance, such that if you're then co-administering it with a different drug, you can then look at the liability of that compound on the independent metabolic pathways. Great, 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 great. So of course, so after this model is now developed, you need to verify the model. Yes. So, um, you know, I guess it's a critical point to verify the model. And obviously, uh, this is where we start interacting, uh, you know, demonstrating to the regulators the the viability of this model. Yes, that's and, right. Any, is there anything you want to add there? Because I know the, mo the the paper certainly speaks to the importance of it and, and how to how to actually accomplish this. Okay, so usually um, there are a number of steps that you take when you're verifying your model. So first of all, you need to verify exposure. So you want to be sure that this model that you've developed, you're able to recover the exposure either when are you, um, when are you, if it's dosed intravenously or orally. So what you try to do is to replicate the clinical study that you're verifying your model against. So using the same number of subjects, um, the same... Um, percentage of females, the trial design should be the same. So the dosing of the drug, and then you look at your exposure. Um, so comparing predicted over observed in, in normal circumstances, in certain cases, we look at the visual, we use visual predictive checks. So overlaying your observed data over the predictions. And so you can also use your um, predict, calculating your predicted over observed, knowing that your, your um, simulation ships are supposed to meet a certain criteria, for instance, the guest criteria. Excellent, excellent. And then I know you addressed this a little bit earlier, but the third step is really the applicability of the model. You know, and as, as we've discussed, right, you know, the, the compound that you selected here has kind of wide applicability, uh, not only for oncology, but just in terms of the SIPs that are being um, you know, addressed. So um, maybe you could just make another comment there. Okay, so um, I think I think the fantastic utility of PPK modern is the application. So first of all, not just looking at DDI liability, but also looking at the application in different populations. So we know that because the physiology of a population might be different depending on um, the ethnicity, for instance, or the disease um, changes. Um, so one of the things you can look at is how that DDI liability can change between one population and the other or under certain disease conditions. So for instance, hepatic impairment, because um, you know that certain cancer, um, cancer population, amongst the cancer population, some of them may have either renal or hepatic impairment. So that's one of the utilities of the, simula of the, of the model. But we also look at, so one of the things that we mentioned in the paper was that um, ondansetron is a PGP substrate. So a lot of times um, the, the pharmacodynamic effect of ondansetron can be affected based on the uh, uh, efflux activity of PGP in the brain. So that can, decide, that can um, speak into the inter-individual variability you will see in the anti-nausea effect of undansetron. So th those are different applications that you can do with the model, which we haven't actually covered in this paper, but there's the utility of um, PPK modeling as a whole, actually. Yeah, and you know, you just mentioned something that I don't think is widely known about SimSip and the PVPK 
uh, SimSip Simulator platform, which is that it does look at PD as well. Yes. It's very well known for its, obviously it's PK, um, but it also provides PD and has for, for many years and, 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 and many organizations are taking advantage of that capability. So um, final question, which is really more of a wrap up, which I just would say, you know, guidance and best practices. Um, if there's just a, a few takeaways for people here, what would they be? So I think many times within the simulator um, or within SimSip as a whole, we're always trying to expand the simulator. But usually um, it's very data driven. So I would say when you're developing your model, you need to, the better the data you have, the better your model. But because it's a dynamic process, you can always constantly refine your model. Um, so get the best data that you have in the first instance, develop your fit for purpose model. And then as more data becomes available, you can always refine your model and widen the applicability of your model. Absolutely. You know, the whole learn, confirm, uh, predict, learn, confirm cycle. Exactly, yes. exactly. Yes. That is, uh, that is um, you know, what, what what you've seen. There has been, you know, as, as you just said, tremendous uh, growth and applicability of these models, but you got to start and you've got to start with what you have and then build from there. Um, okay, so anything final that you'd like to add here uh, other than don't be afraid, get in there and do it? Um. I think I think what I was uh, as a wrap up I wanted to say um, use the SimSip simulator or use any PPK simulator you have or use SimSip because we, there's a lot of effort that goes into expanding the models and while we as a as a science team focus on making a lot of the models more mechanistic we do rely on people using these models to point out you know better ways how we can expand the model to suit, you know, their specific purposes. So please use the SimSim Sim Simulator and hopefully um, as time goes on, we'll publish other ways, other tutorials in which you can develop other models um, that can be useful, um, utilized in the SimSim Sim Simulator. Thank you so much. It's been a Thank pleasure. Everybody um, get to it. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was nice speaking with you.